what most people in the existing system think is Bitcoin's price in that existing system. And the truth is Bitcoin is repricing the entire existing system. And that trend, that transition is what we're dealing, dealing with. And in its, that transition is open for any single person on the planet to, to move, move it's, and nobody can stop it. It's just literally impossible to stop, but it's, it's repricing the existing system, not the other way around. Yeah. Those are good points. And I just think it's funny when they come out, it's some arbitrary, you know, it's 14 years, you know, uptime still 99.9%. All the fundamental metrics are up and to the right. And then they claim victory as fiat currencies are being debased at an increasingly rapid rate right now. It's just, it's kind of ironic. It's like they, they, they don't have any awareness about what's going on, or maybe they do. And they're just trying to paint this picture that things are rosy, but uh, the other system continues to gain momentum the system that we're all excited about today. And his comments were interesting, I think, when you think about uh, the piece that you wrote, Jeff, recent, or a couple months ago, The Finding Signal in a Noisy World, brought up this idea that it's the first time we've had decentralization and, and a secure and decentralized network um, and what that means. And he talks about how you know only a historical infrastructure built with laws and institutions can have credibility, but that's not necessarily the case now that Bitcoin exists, right? Well, I, I think that's actually one of the things that so many people have a hard time understanding Bitcoin, especially if if rule of law has, or you, a perception of rule of law has existed in your in your life. They they um, in those regions, it would be harder to believe that uh, in Bitcoin because you could trust the financial institution, you could trust the institutions. There was rule of law to be able to protect you, but but money is superordinate to rule of law. And if it wasn't, um, then you would expect where money was most broken, you'd have the best laws protecting people. And it looks exactly the inverse. And so, so what that sa says, and, and it's pretty obvious, what ends up happening with the corruption of money becomes corruption of laws, becomes corruption of the state, as everybody races in to be able to, and, 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 and the money protects actually the people creating the laws because if you have more money you lobby and you or you uh, or you 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 get your politician elected to be able to control the, the next step and laws change in favor of the people who, who have the money and that's that's where we are in the world and and there's a lot of people who don't know that that's happening and that's it's been happening for a long time, and the cascade of all of the chaos that's caused in the world is actually a cascade of that that signal, that broken signal in money, corrupting uh, corrupting a system. And there's people that believe that the laws can protect them from that, and the laws are designed to actually protect the abusers of money, not the other way around. And so, so, so what Bitcoin changes is it removes that it places like like I wrote about that decentral we've never had decentralization and trust together decentralization and security together so we had to trust an institution instead and we hoped that that institution would protect us from the very abuses that would ha happen and it turns out that those institutions as well because they need funding are part, are part of an in infrastructure that requires uh, it requ so if you have mani manipulation under that if you have manipulation of money underneath the institutions laws change over time and hurt individual people this is the first time in history that we've had something different um, that that you could you could essentially obviate the need for that institution with with the decentralization and security together and put us in control but why it's so hard to see is we're used to trusting our bank. We're used to trusting somebody else to do that. We're used to trusting an inst institution isn't corrupt. Um, and, and that change as they become more corrupt becomes, uh, becomes hard to hard to see. And we're not used to trusting ourselves. So that's why self custody is hard for people. They think their bank is safer when their bank is, is not safe. And you, you, you think about regulation, right? Um, entire regulation sits on top. Of, so you have regulation to protect your money on top of a system designed to steal your money. Mm. Right. <laughs> and so how could that ever work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I can yeah. just add something here as a, 
as a non finance and you have a background in finance, Sam. I, I do not. And so I had never heard of the Bank of International Settlements or this, you know, uh, Augustine guy. Like I, this was completely new to me. And one other kind of interesting thing that I think is going to occur to people uh, now is that like there is there are these large uh, centralized organizations that coordinate activity uh, coordinate like well what activity is unclear but coordinate money somehow yeah it's like it's very I don't want to sound like a conspiracy nut here but who is the Bank of International Settlements and why are they declaring victory what war are they fighting what standing do they have to fight that war right like we no one elected them uh, nope. they don't represent any particular country who, who, like what the heck so this is very, very weird. And like, if, what, they've been there all along. What have they been doing exactly? So from a pleb perspective, it, it, it just goes to what Jeff is saying. We think of, when we think of top-down centralized organizations, we think of the ones that we elected by voting. And we think of them as ultimately putting the rails on a system to protect consumers, borrowers, etc. But in fact... It's looking more like, no, no, there's a monetary system with rules of its own, organizations of its own, and they are actually pulling some strings uh, behind the organizations that we elected uh, because there is some overlap there. Uh, and and that's sort of unsettling from an outside perspective. Like once you're a Bitcoiner and you're well into the scene, you're like, ah, yes, there's international money organizations and they don't like bitcoin but if you're just if you're just outside that scene this is kind of like a, a wake-up call like you didn't even know these organizations existed let alone they were engaged in some kind of conflict so again i, I think it's kind of a cell phone on on the part of the bis it's like no you should stay quiet <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, the, and you know do your thing be very quiet that's like the banker's way you don't like you don't say you're fighting anything you just pretend it's all part of just the norm and and i think for bitcoiners now we have the luxury of in some ways being quiet right like go ahead you've you've won okay we lost you know yeah. let's just disappear for another couple of years you'll hear from us at the having not from <laughs> us you'll just see you'll just see ngu and be like oh wait i thought that was dead and how many times has that happened right so we get to be the quiet, dormant phase power structure that is unseen, except it's not us in particular. It's just the natural forces of, uh, of incentives. Uh, right? So it's a weird reversal and a reveal uh, of what's going on. Yeah, Bank of International Settlements, I mean, they really do act above all sovereign governments. So when then they manipulate the money as well. So when the money's manipulated, and they're even acting above the laws. Like they've even, you don't even have to change the laws because they're already acting above it. Um, but Bitcoin, like Jeff was saying, there's this wheel of history that happens. Like I thought, think about Rome, obviously, is a good example of this, where it does just start to fall apart when the people start to revolt. And um, Bitcoin kind of breaks that wheel because it's never existed before. And that's what I loved about Jeff's piece. And so, Jeff, you know, that, that piece again, the finding signal in a noisy world. I, what is the noise? Like, what do you what, what do you characterize as the noise? And 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 that's actually why if, when, once you actually understand what's happening, um, you can tune out of all of that noise, and you have to think about. Um, but but I think about um, it, just really simp simply, money is information, and it all it is is information. It describes what you really want. You don't actually want more money. You think you want more money, but you're actually asking for more money to describe what you really want. And that might be more time with your family. That might be more love because you think that you abstract money. Having more money means other people will respect you more. It might mean a whole bunch of things, but you're actually taking the information that money is carrying to describe why you want the money. So if money is just information describing what you really want and you have man manipulation of information, Misin so so you have misinformation in money, then as a byproduct in a world that's connected, especially around technology where it's connected at light speed, then you must have misinformation cascading everywhere in the, in, in the world. 
at light speed. And inside that, you will have these pockets of people believing one theory or believing another because they're all looking through that misinformation. And if I'm being in, in, in going down that rabbit hole in understanding that misinformation, then you have to put yourself inside that too. And you realize, okay, well, I might be sus suspect the same misinformation uh, as well. And everybody that I'm talking to in Bitcoin might be suspect to that. So you have to do a lot of work to say, am I outside that misinformation? Um, and you have to go down to a first principles level to understand why Bitcoin is different and it actually is based on truth. It's based on hope. It's based on abundance. It's a different system outside of that existing system. Now, what I just said there is a hard thing to wrap your head around because we don't think of money as information. We don't think about that. We don't think we live on top of a broken system and we, it, we, we, experience the world our house goes up each year we we think about our family we could get a better job we could try to get a raise we try we don't think about the plumbing underlying that system very often and what that could mean or that the information hierarchy in that money could break everything else and so it's it it, it unwinds a whole bunch of your preconceived when when we talk about going down the rabbit hole and why that's a that's a tough thing for people because they have to give up a whole bunch of former things they believed in to be able to to understand what uh, what's what's happening. But once you're there, and you realize the existing system that would spectacularly collapse globally without more misinformation and money because the debt is unrepayable. $400 trillion of debt. If you paid back a debt a dollar a second, it would take you 32,000 odd years <laughs> to pay back <laughs> 1 trillion. <laughs> so oh, 400 trillion is, it's already insolvent, right? So that's just, it's, it's already insolvent. So the only reason that in your, everything exists today is because we grant authorities an ability to create misinformation and money, more more manipulation of money. The only reason, and once you understand that, um, and you understand what Bitcoin will obviate the need to, and it'll ch transition <laughs> a, 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 a new system, then you realize the existing system is going to get a lot noisier. It's, it has to, because it's at risk of something that offers better results to the planet and removing power from the people who control the, the existing system. It's at risk. So w if that happened and you controlled all the strings of that existing system, whether it was you, you telling yourself, if you didn't do it, people would starve. Or if you told yourself any sort of reason to be able to retain control of that, um, you can realize that there's, to Troy's point, there will be a fight against that system. And if Bitcoin could be stopped, then it would have already been stopped because the, the existing system we live in is 10,000 times bigger than Bitcoin today. And Bitcoin is more decentralized, more secure today than it was last year, year before, it gets, keeps getting, so it's moving, and, and that's why it transitions the world to this, this new path. And the view, I don't think about Bitcoin price going up, you know this, Sam, but I think about everything just because it should describe all other things inside the system and it's, it can't be manipulated. So it's all other things falling in price against Bitcoin over time.